Let's get started off by adding some proper kickoffs to our bot. At the top here, we're going to do if not self dot kickoff done. And then we're going to do if self dot is clear, then self dot push routines dot generic kickoff. And then after this, we're just going to return. So we wait until the kickoff is done. Now let's see how this looks in game. So they face the ball, boost, and do a flip. Let's say that we want to put the ball on that and not just drive directly towards the ball. For this, we are going to use the short shot routine, and then we are going to pass in a target. In this case, we'll do self.fogol.location. So I went ahead and changed everything that needed to be changed, and let's see how this looks in game. Both bots going for kickoff, and it's a neutral kickoff, naturally. And there we go. The bots are... They kind of circle around the ball in an attempt to put the ball between themselves and the net. However, one thing is, as you see right there, if the difference is too great, then the bot might whiff. Alright, blue. On a breakaway. Oh! Just misses the net. Let's see what red can do with this. Blue whiffed again. Red decides to break it out. He's on a breakaway. He decides to head back towards his net. So does blue. Blue, he can... Ooh! Now let's try and do some boost management. So, if we're on low boost, which we'll say this is... If self.me.boost is less than 36, then we're going to say if self dot is clear. And now we're going to get a list of all of the big active boosts. And in order to do this, we're going to make a variable boosts. And it's going to be a list of boost pad for boost pad in self dot boosts which is a list of every single boost pad on the field if boost pad dot active and boost pad dot large and this will do exactly what we want it to do it will get the boost pads in self.boosts only if the boost is active and it's a large one. If there is one or more boosts, then we are going to find the smallest value in the boosts list where that value is going to be the distance between the boost pad and our car. So this will return the closest large active boost pad. And then we're going to push routines dot go to boost closest boost. Go to boost is a little different from go to as it only gives up once the boost pad goes inactive. This could be because your bot picks up the boost pad or if an opponent picks up the boost pad. Then, if not self doc is clear, then we're going to return. So if we're doing something, then we're just going to wait until that thing is done so we can go get boost. Or if we're currently getting boost, then we've made our decision. And you just have to add an S right here. Now let's see how this looks in game. Alright, they're going for kickoff, and then they're immediately going to go for boost, and they're going to loop around with their short shot, and blue gets it past orange, and it's on net. Let's replace short shot with something a little more robust. First, we're just going to get rid of this, and instead we're going to say, if self dot is clear or self dot odd tick equals zero and what odd tick is 
is it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and it increments every single tick. So, using this, we can look for a shot every fourth tick. And this is important because finding shots is actually kind of expensive. Not much changes in four ticks. So, if we just look from every fourth tick, we can save on quite a bit of CPU resources while not really impacting the performance of our bot. So, we're going to say shot equals none. And this will just be our default. Now we're going to say if self dot ball dot location dot y times utils dot side self dot team. And what this will do is it will modify the y location of the ball. So a positive value means that the ball is in our half of the field, and a negative value means that the ball is in our opponent's half of the field. So in this case, we're going to say is less than 640. So if the ball is on our opponent's side of the field or slightly on our side of the field, then we're going to say shot equals tools.find underscore shot then we're going to pass in self and now we need a target to shoot towards here we need to pass in a tuple with our leftmost target and then our rightmost target and for this we're going to say self dot bogle dot left post and then self dot bogle dot right post and this we'll find the shot that shoots the ball between these two targets. Next, we're going to say, if shot is not none, so if we were able to find a shot, then we're going to say, if self dot is clear, then we can just push the shot to the stack. And notice I am not initializing the shot, because the shot is actually already initialized. So I'm just pushing the variable. Otherwise, we are going to do current shot name equals self dot get stack routine name, new shot name equals shots dot underscore underscore class underscore underscore dot underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Now we're going to say if new shot name is current shot name. So if our current shot is the same as the routine that we're currently running, then we're going to say self.stack0.update shot. And this will take the shot that we're currently doing and just update the data within the shot. What this will do is it will prevent shots that are in the middle of doing some task that can't be interrupted and just delay the information update for just a little bit and only if necessary. Otherwise, we're going to clear the stack and then push the shot to the stack. And now that we've made our decision, we're just going to return. Let's see how this looks in game. Here we go. Both bots heading for kickoff. Now they're gonna go for boosts. And now they're actually not going to do anything because they currently can't find a shot that they can take within six seconds that will put the ball on the net because their position just isn't good enough. So here we're going to say if self dot is clear and then we're going to say if self dot ball dot location dot y times utils self dot team is greater than 640. So if the ball is on our side then we're going to say retreat routine 
equals routines dot retreat and if retreat routine dot is viable self so this will tell us if pushing the routine retreat to the stack will actually do anything because sometimes the retreat routine will just pop right away because we're already at the target that it wants to be at. So this will make sure that that is not the case. And then we're going to push the retreat routine to the stack. Otherwise, we're going to do the same thing, but instead with the shadow routine. So what the shadow routine will do is it will get us significantly closer to the ball. And when we are in our opponent's end, it will put us in a position to shoot the ball on net. And when we are in our half of the field, then it will put us in a good position to defend the ball that is heading towards our net. And here we just need to do utils.side. Now let's see how this looks in game. All right, we got our bots going for kickoff. Now they're gonna go for boost. And now they're going to shadow. And now we got them going for a ground shot. And blue gets it on target and scored. Let's see, how did this look? So he's coming in and then he accelerates. And he gets it right past orange. Now, the fine tools Util will not only find ground shots, it will also find jump shots, double jump shots, and aerial shots. However, what a demo. It will only go for the shot that's appropriate. So it will only go for ground shots when the ball is on the ground. It will only go for jump shots when the ball is slightly above the ground and double jump shots when it's about at the goal post height and then aerials it'll just go for aerials whenever it can and as you can see here orange bot was really just sitting there and that is because it couldn't take any shot at all because that's what we programmed our logic to do it's only going to shoot the ball on net when the ball is in our opponent's half and right now we have no way to de actually defend against that so let's go back up here and now we're going to say if shot is none and self dot ball dot location dot y times utils dot side self dot team is less than self.me.location.y times utils.side self.team. What this means is it basically ensures that we are further on our side than the ball is. Now we're going to do shot equals tools.find any shot and we're just going to pass in self. And what find any shot does is it finds a shot without a target. So it's kind of like short shot, however, it is much more reliable with the caveat that it won't shoot the ball on target. Now let's head into the game and see how this looks. Going kickoff. Once again, a neutral kickoff. Now they're going to go for boost. Oh, we got an aerial from orange. Ooh. Blue got there first, though. Blue doing a little aerial. Doing another aerial. Alright, blue. Ooh. Blue's loving his aerials right now. And there goes orange on an aerial. Ooh, what a pinch into blue's end. Looks like orange on target to get this goal. Yes, he is. Looked like blue there was going to get a boost. Orange already got his boost though. Just had to tap it in. Nice.
Now let's go on to the final boss. This is what I like to call anti-targets. What an anti-target is, is unlike a target where you're trying to hit the ball towards something, with an anti-target you're trying to hit the ball away from something. For example, our own net. So while this right here is prone to own goaling, because we're not making any sort of adjustments, if we simply do find shot, and then we pass in self, and then instead of passing in a tuple of left target, right target, if we instead pass in a tuple of right target, then left target, so we'll go self.friendgoal.rightpost, and then self.friendgoal.leftpost, well, now we just created an anti-target. So this is going to be much less prone to own going, and we can actually just get rid of this. Now let's go see how this looks in game. Both bots going for kickoff. Another neutral kickoff. Who could have seen this coming? And they're going for boost. Oh my god. Both up for an aerial. It was closer to blue, so he gets there first. They're both going for the same for the same boost, but orange got there first. Orange up for an aerial. Blue up for an aerial, but orange hit it. Orange hits it again. Orange scores! This is a good time to mention that anti-targets are not completely pro completely exempt from own going. As they can hit what they think is away from their goal, but then it'll rebound off a wall and then go into the goal. And the bots can't do any sort of wall math, so they have no idea if that's going to happen or not. Looks like Orange is about to score again, though. No, it went wide. Orange up for an aerial, though. Oh, it hit the post and bounced out. Looks like Orange is knocking it back towards his own side, but he shouldn't own goal that. Blue up for the aerial. Went high though. So yeah. I think this is a good place to end off this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Where we are going to go through and review all the variables in the agent. And review all of the data that is available to you. Such as information on the ball. The uh, last touch made on the ball, um, the faux goal, and your own goal, as well as the current game mode, the current gravity, and all that good stuff. So, see you then!